uh, no, the, the Vadhus Vaswani Center in Cricklewood, where I live, had the, the first time the L LFB attended was three years ago, and in that time they've become it's, it's you've got young adults, all sorts of people on the on the uh, fire trucks. Um, Final question, uh, Assembly Member Polatinsky. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Martin, just to clarify something, because I agree with 99.9% .9 of what okay. you said, which is good. Right. But earlier on, I feel like you said that there's no suggestion that this isn't actually affecting the firefighting duties. But my understanding from, from hearing testimony and speaking to people is if you feel someone's racist, anti-Semitic, misogynistic, transphobic, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. you feel like they've not got your back. So then if you're running into a highly dangerous situation, then how can that not affect? No, I can, I can understand from the firefighters' perspective. I, I probably misspoke. I meant I hadn't seen evidence that any attitudinal issue had caused a worse outcome for a victim of fire. Okay. Uh, which I thought was really quite important. So it's actually the obverse of the problems we have with the Met Police, for instance, where operationally <coughs> race and gender is widely thought to make a difference to outcome, who's charged with what, who's cautioned, who's arrested, etc. I haven't had any experience of anybody saying, I think my house was allowed to burn for longer or my toaster wasn't dealt, toaster fire wasn't dealt with because I'm an ethnic minority. But you're absolutely right. I, as I said earlier, People need to feel safe in their working environment if you want the, them to perform well. And it seems to me, as I said, if they're getting sleepless nights or dreading going to work, as some people have expressed to me already, then that, that's not going to make for an efficient, well-run service. That makes sense. Thanks, so thanks for the clarification. To, hopefully you're up to 100% um, now. And the final question <laughs> is, what is your view of the progress and pace of cultural change in the fire brigade? Um, I think that in most institutions it's pretty glacial. But I'd like to think that what I will bring to the party is uh, something whereby I can say that the, these, are, these are targets. You, you, you need to resurvey and you need to find out whether people do feel there's been material change and if not, why not? And we may need to think about doing that. I know Andy's talked about survey fatigue, I mean, initial 10 years a year. We may need to think about certainly doing it before the end of that year mm -hmm. and say, you know, we've been in post for six, eight months. Yeah. How do you feel it's going? And that's something I want to kind of have a continuous dialogue with people that I meet, because I am intending to try and get to a good few uh, stations and community groups and, and, and say, or what can we do to make things better, to make you feel more comfortable, to make you feel more valued? Because I think ultimately that's what it's about, is how valued do you feel in your working environment? And I think it's, it's absolutely vital that people feel valued and these are very close relationships the, the these watches you know you might have six or eight of you and as, as you said you've got to have each other's back you've got to have confidence in each other you've got to think that you're being treated fairly it, but again the downside of that is you're very very identifiable as a complainant mm. because you're you know you were the person who was on the hose when you were shouted at um, because there were, it could only have been one other person and the other person was the person who shouted at you how do you complain about that person how do you complain about that person if your line manager <clears throat> has been a firefighter with your protagonist for 15 years and you've been there for six months? So there are all these st difficult structural issues, but I think that that may be something that the unions can help us with, because there is obviously a, a, an issue around power dynamic as well, it seems to me. Thanks. It's really good to hear how much the trade union is going to be embedded in this process. So thank you. Thanks, Chair. Okay. I just thank, thank all of my fellow Assembly members and our guests for your contributions today. I realise this is a, a, a tricky subject and we really covered a lot of ground in that time.